The biggest story of the day, it was a scam estimated to have cost the Indian exchequer almost $40 billion and the verdict is out. Six years later, a special CBI court has acquitted all 19 accused in the second generation spectrum allocation scam. A scandal in which many prominent names cropped up, including DMK leader Kani Mori and then telecom minister A. Raja. Well, Special Judge O.B. Saini ruled that, and I quote, I have no hesitation in holding that the prosecution has failed to prove the charges beyond reasonable doubt. So all are acquitted, unquote. Well, celebrations were witnessed outside the court and both the DMK and Congress hailed it as a triumph of truth. We are very happy justice has prevailed and uh, it's a big day for the DMK and my family. It's an answer to uh, all the blame and all the problems which we went through. Court judgment has to be respected and I'm glad that the court has pronounced unambiguously that all this massive propaganda which was being done against the UPA was without any foundation. I have never commented on this case when this case was going on and I don't think I should comment now. But one thing is clear, that the allegation of a major scam involving the highest levels of government was never true, was not correct and that has been established today. The fact that this was a corrupt policy intended to promote corruption and that it resulted in a loss already stands established both by the Supreme Court verdict and by the fact of subsequent auctions. There is nothing in this that uh, the Congress party should consider it as some kind of a certificate as far as they are concerned. Well, as the Congress leader claimed vindication of their stand, BJP hit back, saying that the verdict was not a certificate of innocence. Well, uh, reactions coming in from all quarters following uh, the verdict. Let's listen in. At the quarters held that the prosecution has failed to prove the charges beyond reasonable doubt. Now, that's the cardinal principles of criminal jurisprudence. And the court has given effect to that. Whether it is done rightly, wrongly, without reading the judgment, I cannot say. But it shows the independence of, of the judge. He may be fallible, he may be wrong, but he had the independence to hold these accused not at all guilty of the charges against them. There was a lot of political hype and you know what happens. So, they are very happy about it. They are entitled to be happy. But the happiness may be short-lived. There is an appeal to the High Court. I'm sure the High Court will admit the appeal, but allow or not a different matter. So, till that time, I think it's a little premature to come to any definite conclusions about the judgment. Poi kanak kagalah yang lama khati inda barang kay tini tarikh. Aha apadi pata anda barang kiler rende kutcha mat anai baru me kutcha mat sabar kay inda uru tirpe nilil irika kuri tani niri mandat timu lama kay kadei tirpe de ura beriye magilci kuriye undre. Akhirnya tani ni di bandrom, timu kabe purut terbaril, yen de thawarum sehia bilai, yen badai teli bahaya, tanur de tirpil mula mahe beri pura tiri kerar gel. Akhirnya apu ipuri pura terbarilat se serap pemik ke tirpu bandar ke kuri mena retil, udah hati cahan dar ke kuri unggalai, an mizan de panih wode ketu kala berum bade, inda wadak ku pada pata bade. Yang dalam ruk ke, umur lagi pon dah orang kanggal, ini perihal beriti. Makar ada tera, kerana kat timi dia, walau perih kerang kat tera, sumatera berde berde kerudi ni rukula, an dalam ruk ke perihal beriti sehidi rukai. Ia perlu tiup 
எந்தவித குற்றம் எந்தவித குற்றமும் செய்யவில்லை என்று ஒரு அழக ஒரு வரலாற்று சிறப்புக்குரிய ஒரு தீர்ப்பு வந்திருக்கிறது வழக்கு போடப்பட்ட போது எவ்வளவு ஆர்வத்தோடு இந்த வழக்கில் நீங்கள் கவனத்தை செலுத்தினீர்களோ ஆக அந்த வழக்கில குற்றமற்றவர்கள் என்று தீர்ப்பு வந்ததற்கு பிறகு இந்த தீர்ப்பை மக்களிடத்தில் இது ஆர்வத்தோடு நீங்கள் எடுத்து சொல்ல வேண்டும் அந்த கடமையை நீங்கள் ஆற்றிட வேண்டும் என்று திராவிட முன்னேற்றக் கழகத்தின் சார்பில் என்னுடைய வேண்டுகோளை உங்களிடத்தில் பணிவோடு நான் கேட்டுக்கொள்கிறேன் But I, of course, succeeded him. And when I succeeded him and I looked at the facts, I told the people of this country, there's nothing wrong that has happened. And today my position and the government's position and the prime minister's position has been vindicated. Mm. It so, is most unfortunate mm. that the country had to go through this. And it, in fact, a lot of the NPAs in the banks today are on account of the fact that these telecom companies, licenses were canceled. cancelled people had to borrow money from the banks they couldn't return money to the banks that's how many of the, a lot of these npas have accumulated that also is the responsibility of the opposition not us it is at best it could be a civil issue and all these people of the industry who were accused in this case they have suffered enough for the last 6 years they have been unable to travel and their licenses have been cancelled therefore uh, i presume that the judgment would be saying that it's a matter of clause 8 which cannot be a matter of legality and that's probably what has happened we we don't know about the loss the etc a lot of that was notional loss as you know and the main thing is that the public got cheaper telephone rates so i'm not quite sure about the loss but if they've been acquitted then clearly justice has worked as it's supposed to work in our country no no this is what happens you know unfortunately the the opposition parties our adviser adversaries and also few medias they bloated this subject ultimately the they have we have now you know come down to the reality and you know it, legally it is not justifiable and even the projection given by this ag was totally wrong and it's hollow and he he also based upon only some perception and estimation i don't think the estimation and perception uh, will be legally sustainable in the court of law that is what what has happened this is court's verdict and uh, the, the, this is what uh, mr a raja was uh, uh, telling every decision was taken collectively in consultation with senior co colleagues and uh, he made that statement on the floor of the house now he stands vindicated and we on correspondent jessica taneja spoke to counsel of two ji accused vijay agarwal who hailed the court's verdict and questioned controller and auditor general of india vinod rai for his report on the two ji spectrum back in 2010 we're joined by mr vijay agarwal mr agarwal all have been acquitted there were some very very serious charges yeah. you're saying that just because a cad nominee comes up with a, a report of sorts you will not buy that but how will you deny that so many so much money was put here and there what about the scam in total no money was put here and there everything was notional see the the, the government wanted and the country wanted that there should be more tally density and people should have lower tariffs so that would have been the result of raja's policy so it was a policy decision and a policy decision can never be challenged by an accountant or in a court of law okay fine it can be challenged by an accountant but that is more than 1 lakh crore that cost the exchequer how do you how do you explain that it is it is only a judgmental issue and the cag felt that the everything should be auctioned that is not the case for the natural resources natural resources of the country are allocated but by even the, the supreme the court recognizes no no sir you will but even let me complete and don't argue here cbi argued they had they 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 had the big uh, prosecution lawyer nominated by the supreme court so they all, uh, all argued there and they failed madam no 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 so if you you say that first come first serve is not the way to go you say uh, you know is the way to go auction is not the way to go but even the supreme court identifies that auction is the most transparent way of distributing licenses how would you disagree with that see revenue maximization is not the object of the government in a welfare state you have so, so many subsidies so why do you uh, give the support prizes to the farmer you should go by the market forces everything is not determined by the market forces in a welfare state madam what are you going to do from now on we will read the judgment and find out i will read the judgment and find yeah. out
Well, happy day for you. Thank you for speaking to Vyan. Well, there you go. We heard Vijay Agarwal talk about how all the accused in the case have been acquitted and the reasons they are acquitted with the judgment will definitely tell them in some time. Jessica Taneja with video journalist Ankit Singh and Gopal for Vyan, New Delhi. And well, all the big political names and bureaucrats accused of involvement in India's 2G spectrum scam that came to light back in 2008 have been acquitted in New Delhi. Uh, 2G, of course, stands for second generation wireless technology, basically an upgrade on cell phone technology that allowed calls to now be digitally encrypted, included data services like SMS and others. But what was this scandal all about? Let's quickly take a look. Well, it happened in 2008 instead of auctioning licenses for the new 2G technology, the then government of India allotted 122 of them to nine select companies and that too at prices determined in 2001. Estimates of the loss suffered by the exchequer varied from 27 billion US dollars to 300 billion US dollars. Well, the government of the time was a coalition led by India's oldest Congress party and, the and they accused uh, included crucial coalition partners from the South Indian state of Tamil Nadu and some bureaucrats. There were also allegations against brokers, middlemen and public relations consultants who were the chief accused. The charges were made against India's former telecom minister A. Raja and the daughter of DMK's party chief Kani Mori. They were charged with using a forged document arbitrarily changing the existing first-come, 1st come 1st serve policy of awarding licenses and of accepting $2 billion in exchange from one of the awardee companies for getting the 2G license. Well, it was a huge scandal at the time and instrumental in shaping public opinion about the Congress party-led UPA coalition government, which was hit by a total of nine corruption scandals during the 10 years of its rule. The actual culprits may have been coalition partners, but it was the Congress party that suffered the loss of face in public, especially after embarrassing statements by some of its ministers trying to brush off the scandal as unimportant. The embarrassment deepened when India's highest Supreme Court declared the arbitrariness in awarding the licenses as unconstitutional. Individuals were fined heavily and came in for scathing criticism for the allergies with India's national assets. And finally, the scam tainted India's reputation around the world in the leading international media.